to see. Um, obviously, you know, the fans at least have been saying this for a while, but is management going to really take a good look at their core and say, can we win yeah. with this group that we have? Obviously, of course, the blue line, I think, is the first thing they need to address. But then you have to think of, like, you know, a Grudger or Monaghan and be like, are these guys that can, you know, take us to that next level moving forward? Yeah. Uh, if they want to keep them, you know, they have faith in them. They are in good contracts, so it's not like something like they need to move. I think they're pretty reasonable deals. And I think those are deals that can have a lot of value in trade as well. So I think if they do want to move the core, those core pieces, they can do it. Uh, but obviously, first things first is just addressing the UFAs on the blue line, who they keep. That will be a big component of how they go moving forward. And then do they go after a guy like Holby or do they go like, uh, after a guy like someone else? Talbot had... You know, was serviceable in the regular season, but he's a UFA again, and I don't really know if he can consistently do what he did this year. So I think those are, they have a lot of questions. And, um, again, uh, moving forward, uh, is this a team that can go four rounds in the playoffs? Or are they just going to be a team that's, you know, in and out of the playoffs, out for the second round? Uh, I think they're going to have to ask some more questions. Yeah. I I think that Holpe is the biggest kind of um, – he's just such a mystery in the free agent market because you're probably going to have to pay, what do you think, like six, seven million probably for him for a few years. And you just don't know what you're going to get out of him, honestly. Like, because, you know, like Max was saying, Max, we, we assumed he was going to be in, in cup-winning form this playoffs, and he wasn't. Um, and he wasn't good in the regular season. So it's like – what do you expect from Holtby and, you know, do you think it just, do you think Holtby in general, Max, is just too risky of a contract for a franchise? Um, it's not about the risk. It's like just, I think it's just an issue of finding a place where you're both able to afford it and people are willing to take on the contract that's going to be offered. And uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't see like a team who can really take that across the league, across the board, so. Yeah, yeah it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot of question marks, and uh, I have some insider info that I can't say. Um, oh, I've heard it. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, We've with, heard Holt, the info. with the Holpe sweepstakes, it'll be, I think it'll just really be who's going to blink first. I think they're... I feel like some team out there will probably sign him to more than he might be worth. But yeah, yeah, I think you could also see a situation where teams are scared to commit to a contract with a goalie like Holby, and then that might drop his value a bit, and Holby end up might settling for a bit less. And I think a team that waits and is able to do that might end up coming out the best. And you know, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I think Vancouver, I mean, uh, not Vancouver, Calgary might actually be a nice spot for him because, you know, I, th- I think he would like to be in Canada. Is that close to uh, home for him? I don't know if and, you grew uh, up in, like, middle of the world. He's from Saskatchewan. Okay. Oh, so, really? I mean, I, I, think it, I think Calgary would be a place he'd probably want to go. Yeah. Or a spot that that's, it's a, it fills a need for the team, and it might be a place he might want to go. So, who's that? Yeah, I mean, he could rebound. I mean, he's only ever played for the Caps. So we don't know what a change senior will do for him either. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, it's, it, should be, it should be interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Um, how much he gets is really going to determine, I think, who, uh, if a team really comes out on top or not with that signing. Yeah. I, it's it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with him. Um, and we're going to maybe have a free agent special podcast just to talk about this. But anyways, um, let's move on to uh, the sad series for me. Not as sad as the Hurricanes, but the uh, the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm really sad about this. Uh, I took the Coyotes to win the series. Uh, and they did, did nothing really, uh, anything but win. Uh, they did win a game. Um, but it ended really ugly. Um, you know, the first two games were really close. Um, Kemper just just played absolutely stellar um, and led in two goals at the end in the first game. Um, and then the second game, I think he had an, an absurd amount of saves, but it was like three to two. Um, then they won game three. Again, Kemper played insane. 
Um, and then the last two games, I think both games were like seven to one, right? Um, I mean, just just absolutely destroyed uh, in, the, in the last two games. Um, I think for me overall, my thoughts, it really sucks when, you know, a team kind of just wastes um, a performance like that, you know, from a goaltender. Um, it's just hard to see, you know, when your goal is just having maybe one of the best playoff outings since like Jaguar um, in 2003 for the Ducks when he won the Conn Smythe and they, they lost in the finals. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but um, I don't know if you remember Gene Sebastian Jaguar, but um, anyways, you know, I just, that was, yeah, the, yeah, Gene Sebastian, yeah, Jaguar, um, and so, you know, that kind of Kemper's performance kind of reminded me of that. Um, and he just had no, you know, they they couldn't score goals. And that was what I thought why they were going to win the series is because their fourth liners were and their third line were scoring and they were getting production out of it. And Hall and Kessel were like somewhat producing. Um, that really wasn't the case here. Also, I think... I think Malik is a little too high in Arizona's D. Um, I don't think Golagoski and um, Chikrin are, I don't think Chikrin is there yet. I think he's going to be a good defenseman, but I don't don't think he's there yet. Golagoski is not a very good defenseman overall. Um, I, I like John Merson and Ekman Larson, but you know, Arizona has a good blue line, but it's not, it's not insane. Um, I think it was more just Kemper playing really well um, that series. But anyways, what do you guys think of this series? I know you weren't surprised by the result. Um, Max, you can start us off. Uh, it's a, just like the Vegas uh, uh, Chicago series, it's, a, it's another series that probably should have been a sweep if it wasn't for Kemp. Or, uh, he, I think he basically stole that game. And they only won because uh, they got the empty net goal. The, the, the game they won, an empty net goal was their game winner. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, just Avalanche are just the better, the better teams across the board. Um, um, they're often shown through, um, despite how well uh, Kemper played the first three games. Uh, if obviously after the results, the final two games in the series, uh, they obviously overwhelmed them, and they, they just proved themselves to be the superior team. And I think they really are a contender for the cup. Yeah. Yeah. Malik, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so this is, I think, um, this is a series in the West that I got right, exactly, I said Colorado in five. I thought it'd be a closer five game. Uh, Arizona, like, really just fell apart at the end. But ultimately, like, while I still think their defense, obviously their goaltending is great, I think their system allows them to play good team defense. But when you can't produce offensively and you can't possess offensively, like, yeah. just spending that much time in your own zone, you're going to get overwhelmed. And, you know, Colorado saw that and just took full advantage of it. I think with Arizona moving forward, it's going to be – I feel like their, their question's really behind the bench. Obviously, they have Taylor Hall, who, like, does he stay, does he not stay? Yeah. But I feel like everyone who goes there, like, they just can't – they just stop producing offensively. <laughs> and, you know, the way pocket coaches, I think, can take any decent – like, any team to, like, relevancy – and it can make them competitive, but once they have, you know, some talent up front, and they're still, everyone who goes there just can't seem to find any offensive rhythm. So I think that's where, honestly, they have to look behind the bench and ask if Tocchet's the guy for their team now. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if you fire or not, because were they expected to win against, um, like, did they live this season above expectations? Like, what, what's your guys' take on that? Like, if you, you know, you're Arizona, right? At the trade deadline, you trade for um, Taylor Hall. What is your, and you're the front office GM manager, right? What are you satisfied with if you're the Arizona GM? Max, what, what, what would you, like, like, what are you satisfied with overall with the season? Would you say this season's a disappointment? <laughs> Kemper is what I'm satisfied with. <laughs> Honestly, um, coming into the season, I felt like Arizona just had expectations. Like, uh, they've always, like, been there, right, and had, like, late season collapses, and it was the same this year. Like, they, I feel like they have the pieces they need to, like, 
be like a year by year playoff team. Um, but like it, like um, like said, it's just a, it's an offensive black hole, and despite having all the pieces, they're still so reliant on Kemper um, and Ronto when he's healthy. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what it is. I think it, I think it might be a system thing because. Like you have Kessel scoring twelve goals in a season, like that's just not okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's not that type of player. Like you're, 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 you're not using him, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it's an offensive black hole. It's just you can't get anything done, and it, it has to be a system thing or a culture thing. Um, it, it's just too many like players who just go uh, offensive star players who just go there and just don't produce. Um, so I think a change behind the bench and a change of systems might suit them well. And maybe it'll bring uh, more out of their star players if they do. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, let's move to a really exciting and interesting question. Another free agency question. Guys, what do you see with Taylor Hall? One, does he stay in Arizona? Two, what is his annual average value in your opinion? Um, in terms of like money that he'll get, and three, if he doesn't stay in Arizona, where is he going? Malik, you're up first. Um, well, I feel like Arizona could like really needs to try and, and keep him if they can. Yeah. Uh, I feel like they, and like I said, I think coming with the, a lot of the players on that team, I feel like underperformed and didn't live up to their potential, at least not offensively. Yeah, and I totally agree. I feel like if they can keep. Find a way to keep Taylor Hall. Uh, like I said, I feel like a change behind the bench might be necessary to kind of release some of these talented players they have up front. And I think they could see some success. But I think, I don't know if Taylor Hall, if they're going to have to really have a buy into Arizona being a consistent playoff threat moving forward. Because, you know, the dude's tired of losing. Yeah, he has to be tired of losing. I think he's. Would he take? I, I could also see him honestly taking a bit less just to go to a team I can win. Um, where he goes, that I'm not too sure about. I mean, honestly, yeah, in terms of like best fit, I'm like, I still think Arizona like really needs a guy like him uh, who could potentially be a game breaking player uh, given the right circumstances. But uh, I don't know if he'll get too much, honestly, with the way the cap is right now. Um, I feel like GMs are just going to be pretty smart with their money, and I don't know if I'll get as much as we might be anticipating. Yeah, it's going to be, I really don't know, I think the Islanders are going to offer him a lot of money, because they still need that Panarin type forward, you know what I mean? Um, I, I think that's such an interesting, you know, question if, you know, like you said, Malik, would he take less money to go to a contender and, you know, try to win a Stanley Cup. Max, where do you think he will go? What's your prediction? What's your take on Um, Like Malik said, I really think Arizona should consider trying to get um, him. Um, um, Hall has not, like, um, shot down the idea of staying, really. He hasn't really said much about it. Um, Realistically, I don't – I think he's going to ask for way more than he's actually valued. He's not like um, I'm typically against like paying like wingers like as much money. I think centers are way more valuable, like the McDavid and Dreisaitl types. Um, obviously Panarin's a winger, so that might be like kind of rich coming from me. But I think he's the type of player who can who kind of drives play offensively, and he's got a solid defensive side to him, like a center. And he just drives play, so I think he commands the money that uh, he was given. But in general, I think wingers should be paid like Nick Dick money. I think um, yeah. I, he's definitely not going to be like he's going to be asking for way more than he's actually worth. And uh, he's not the type of player like Panarin who drives play or commands play all around the ice. I don't think, um, despite how good he re- despite how good he is, he's just I don't think he's like that. Type of game yeah, I think he's a at this point he's a complimentary piece. Hmm. He's a good yeah, line. he's not the guy. No, he, he, that you're right, Malik. He's not like the main guy on it. He has to be. Yeah, no, you're right. At the same time, I think also he's never really played on a team that has been loaded with talent. 
Yeah. So like if he like if, if, depending on where he goes, I think he could really blossom like offensively if given the right team he signs with. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Aside from the one year uh, New Jersey, like he hasn't like put a team on his back. Like he just had that one off part year. Um, I I just don't think he's the type of player who you should be signing ten plus million dollars for. Wow, you think that? Ha- yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know how much he'll get. Um, I think he's not, not like I think he's around seven million. Wow, like seven eight million at most. Hmm. So you think he's like in a Kevin Hayes type player, like a little better? Uh, yeah. I'm, that's kind of oh, hard to com- Kevin bad Hayes comparison. Is yeah. Kevin Hayes is a terrible comp. Terrible comp. Because Kevin Hayes is like, Kevin Hayes isn't like f- physical and. No, he's been like really bad. He's been, <laughs> yeah, he's been really. Yeah, good. I mean, they love him. Kevin Hayes has been great. He signed it when they signed it. Everyone yeah. was like, "Why would you pay that much for Kevin?" Hayes? Yeah. I I wasn't saying that. As a I was. Fan, I knew he was gonna get. Rangers fan, I knew he was 